Gillette's Cavalcade of Sports is on the air. Good afternoon, baseball fans. This is Mel Allen with Red Barber, greeting you for the Gillette Safety Razor Company, maker of world-famous Gillette razors, blades, and shaving cream. Fans, for the tops in sports, tune in Gillette's cavalcade of sports the year around, the final game of the 1952 World Series. And I know that you're anxious to know the official identities of the starting pitchers. And so quick, really, Quickly, we go right down to the playing field and show you, as you would expect, right-hander Joe Black of the Brooklyn Dodgers, as previously announced by Chuck Dressen, making his third appearance in this series as a starting pitcher. He's won one and lost one. And for the Yankees, the issue is no longer in doubt. It's going to be left-hander Eddie Lopat, so that Manager Casey Stengel, hard-pressed for a starting pitcher for today as a result of having to bring in Allie Reynolds yesterday in relief. Said he had to sleep on it, and he came up with a low pat today. Eddie with three days rest. Coming in to pitch against a Dodger lineup, which is predominantly filled with right-hand batters. The Dodgers have not had too much trouble with the left-hand pitchers, particularly here at Abbott's Field. But Casey Stengel had to come up with somebody. And it's Eddie Lopat on the mound. Eddie lost his first World Series game when he opened the series at the Yankee Stadium last Friday. So we'll see what's going to happen in this final game of the World Series, one of the most dramatic ever played. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it would be most difficult to describe this series in so many words simply say that what has happened so far, regardless of what happens today, this series will go down as one of the greatest and most dramatic of all time. This is the 49th. This is the first seven-game series since these same two clubs, with largely different personnel, of course, battled down to the wire in 1947, the Yankees winning the final game to establish themselves as world champions. The Dodgers who have been, since day before yesterday, on the brink of their first world's title. This is their sixth series, the Yankees' 19th. Are hopeful today of coming back to get it. The series has bounced back and forth. The Dodgers won the first game, the Yankees the second. The Dodgers the third, the Yankees the fourth. The Dodgers the fifth, the Yankees the sixth. But there's no comeback from today. And the way these two teams have battled has been a joy to behold. Thrilling all the way. And as most of the baseball observers have put it, Regardless of who wins or who loses today, it's simply unfortunate that one of these two battling ball clubs has to go down to defeat. And that the team that loses certainly will not be disgraced, and the team that wins can be as proud as punch over having turned in a wonderful job. And so the batting orders for the New York Yankees, leading off and playing third base, Gil McDougal. Hitting second, Bill Rizzuto, shortstop. Batting third, Mickey Mantle, center field. In the cleanup spot, Johnny Mize, first base. 
Hitting fifth, Yogi Berra, catching. Hitting sixth, Gene Woodling, left field. Batting seventh, Herb Noren, right field. Hitting eighth, Billy Martin, second base. In the ninth spot on the order, Eddie Lopat pitching. And now Miss Gladys Gooding at the organ, playing and singing our national anthem. Eddie Lopat, having made one previous start in the series, was charged with the defeat. As we have uh, now concluded giving you the Yankee batting order. Now for the Dodgers. Leading off and playing third base, Billy Cox. Hitting second, Pee Wee Reese. Shortstop. Hitting third and sensationally, Duke Snyder, center field. In the cleanup spot, Jackie Robinson, second base. And you're now looking into the Dodger dugout. And number 42 there, with his hands in his hips, happens to be Jackie Robinson. Batting fifth, Roy Campanella. Catching. Hitting sixth, as the Dodgers have revamped their batting order for the left-handed slants of Eddie Lopez. Gil Hodges, first base. Batting seventh, George Shuba, left field. Andy Papko, as you know, pulled a muscle two days ago and is available only for pinch hitting purposes. Batting eight, right field, Carl Perillo. And in the ninth spot in the order, pitching the brilliant Joe Black, who has won one and lost one. Now the umpires come to the plate. Out in front are, reading from left to right, Bill McKinley, Larry Getz. Getz has his uh, behind the plate paraphernalia. Then, reading from left to right, Dusty Boggess, Jim Honeychick, and in behind, Art Passarella and Dave Pinelli. They will be aligned in this fashion. Getz at the plate, McKinley at first, Pinelli at second, Passarella at third. We'll give you the foul line umpires in uh, a moment. Make certain just where they're going to be. You may be interested in the fact that this is the 12th time in 49 World Series that the Classic has gone the limit of seven games. Of course, there was a time, you remember, when they used to play best five out of nine. Prior to uh, the seven-game limit, when it was necessary to win five out of nine, the series went to eight games four times. Now, in the 11 previous series that have gone the seven-game limit, the National League teams have won seven of them. If you uh, decide to put any uh, faith in uh, previous happenings. Now, the bullpen for both teams will be active right from the very beginning, most likely. Preacher Rowe is down in the Dodger bullpen. He's not going to warm up as yet, but he's going down and he'll be ready. And most likely, you'll see both bullpens flaring up immediately that either of the starting pitcher shows the slightest sign of weakening. Whether or not we can pack any more drama into this World Series than already has been injected into it, I don't know. Whether or not people who've been watching it both here and at home have any reserve strength left to take any more of the excitement, we don't know. But in any case, 
We certainly hope so. There goes Joe Black out to the mound, a brilliant right-hander, and moving into the Gillette microphone, a brilliant broadcaster, the old redhead, Red Barber. Thank you very much, Mel. Now you're seeing the starting Brooklyn battery, Joe Black, coming back for the third time, first time since Frank Shea in 47 has a rookie started three games in a World Series. Campanella back of the plate. Gil Hodges is at first base. Second baseman, Jackie Robinson. At short is Captain Pee Wee Reese. Third baseman is the hands, Billy Cox. Out in left field, we have George Tuba. Another fielder is Duke Snyder. And the right fielder, Carl Farello. Campanello back at the plate. And Mike Google getting ready to be the first hitter for New York. Back on the mound. He's one and one in this series. One uh, beating Reynolds in the uh, opening game. And then lost to Reynolds. He only gave up one run, but still he got beat because that was when Reynolds pitched the shutout. By Google, three for 20. And so here is the whole baseball year. Finally pointed up to one single ball game. This is it. As far as we go, Bill Dickey, pushing in first base for New York. Frank Cruzetti is the third base coach. Here's the first pitch. It's a curve ball hit medium speed to short. Reese. Hodges and one off. One away. Well, the little shot back to the Yankees. Masudo is 3 for 23 getting in. We have one out, no score. The ball game has begun. Call strike. Larry Getz back in the plate working balls and strikes. As manager Stengel, he spent yesterday, especially the late inning, standing in front of his bench, and he's starting out that way today. There's a bat up toward first base. Hodges feels the ball and makes the foot out on Rizzuto, tagging him. So Rizzuto, punting for a base hit, is out to first base and on the system, and to a goal. Rizzuto may have hurt his right knee a little bit when he went into that slide, trying to avoid the tag. Is he dead? Number seven, Mickey Mantle, center fielder. Well, here's Mantle, who's had a great series. He's 8 for 24. His home run was the differential yesterday, as the Yankees even the series at three games apiece, winning three to two. Mantle is switch hitter, as you know. Ground ball is hit foul outside first base. Mantle gets down the line. He can run. No balls, one strike. The Yankees are trying to win a fourth straight world's title, the second time in their history. The Dodgers are trying to win their first. This is their sixth opportunity at it. There's a high foul out of play. Joe Black is one of the most interesting uh, careers that you could study. The big fellow was a rookie at spring training camp, and so little was known about him that he was not. I get this, he was not on the regular roster of the ball club. He, you will not find him in the National League Green Book. The spring training camp roster. That's how little known he was. And um, he came on slowly relieving. He was almost strictly a relief pitcher. This is his third start in the World Series, or one more than he made in the regular kind of race. Pitches high. All of them. One ball, two strikes. Black did not start at all until the closing week of the opponent campaign. When he pitched the game in Boston, which guaranteed the Dodgers no worse than the tie. Turn, strike three. Strike off. Low inside hook. So, nothing across. And in the middle of the first inning, the score is the Yankees nothing, the Dodgers nothing. Eddie Lopat takes the mound for the first time at Ebbets Field in the series. He started and lost to Preacher Rowe in the opening game at the stadium, which was game three of the series. Now to meet the Yankees, we have Johnny Myers at first base. At second base is Martin. The shortstop is Rizzuto, as our camera flips over there. There is Phil. Third base is McDougal. Whittling in left field. Mantle is in center. Right fielder is Norin. Billy Cox first up, and Barra is the catcher. Curveball over for a call strike. 
Going to the record we've been able to put together, Para is establishing a new record for the most put outs by any catch in the history of the World Series. Record, we believe, is 51. He has 52. We total him up. Billy Cox takes on the outside. Ball one. Cox is 6 to 22. The Yankees went down before Joe Black. 1 2 3. But we have no score. There was a screw ball that broke in there, and it is a ball, two strikes. Jake Pitlick coaching at first base for Brooklyn. Manager Charlie Dresson coaching at third. So here we go. That's the first inning, and everything is up for grabs. World's title, winner's share of the first, all the prestige and fame and acclaim. A whole year's work. Lopat, Stocky left hander. Cox swings at a sharp curve. The ball is dropped, picked up. And the tag is made on the hitter. I'll catch a ball. Well, Reese yesterday, for the first time in the series, uh, won a game without getting a base hit. He has nine hits for the series. He and Snyder each have nine. Snyder has become, of course, the hitting star. Rounding ball wide of third. McDougal up with it nicely. And it's a bad throw. And he hits Tipler, the first base coach. It hit Pitt by the first base coach. And friends, this is my 23rd year in this business, and I've never seen a baseline coach hit with a thrown ball before. And just another example, anything can and probably will happen at Ebbets Field. Now, Pitt rubbing the back of his left leg while the ball hit him. McDougal is charged with the error on his throw. And Reese is on, and Pitler, I guess, is glad to pay the price. He was hit with a throw. Once. Foul. The Yankees have now committed seven errors in the series, and that is the third one for McDougal. Third baseman. Snyder hit in both of Brooklyn's runs yesterday with home runs. And as Mal told you, he tied a Gary Groot record for most home runs in the series by a batter with four. He's the third uh, fellow in World Series history to hit four home runs. There's Lopat on the mound. Snyder is the new World Series holder of total bases without anything uh, happening today. Swings and grounds at foul. Every base hit that he gets will add to his record for hitting for the most total bases. His total bases now are 23. In the regular season, Charlie Dresden would drop Snyder down into the second uh, portion of the batting order when the opposition saw the left-hander. Strike three, a curve that Snyder could not check the swing on. Low fat, takes him up. Jackie Robinson has uh, not had the World Series that he had hoped to have. The plain facts of the case, if Snyder had not been hitting, the Dodgers would not be here today. The Yankees would have won it because Robinson, Campanella, and especially uh, Hodges, also, uh, Ferrello and Patco. In other words, the strength, the right-hand hitters who carried the Dodgers to the pennant, the power boys, have been stopped. The Yankee pitching has certainly been rough on the Brooklyn right-hand hitters. Robinson swings, lines it to left center field, and it is a nice running catch by Woodling. That saved the run. Mm-hmm. Woodling went over. Robinson teed off on the ball. It was a hot line drive. But Woodling pulled it out. Nice running catch. No runs, no hits, and one error for the Yankees. And for the Dodgers, no runs, no hits, and no error. Every time you shave to feel sharp And beyond the ball, just be sharp You do let you wait for the quickest fix to shave Okay, here is Johnny Mize. Big fella is four for 12. Leading off the second inning. To be followed by Barrow, then by Woodling. No score. Fast ball, high for ball one. Go outside, ball two. Round ball is hit foul outside first, two and one. I do not think that baseball has a parallel for the story of Joe Black this year. A complete unknown, holding together a very wobbly uh, mound staff. Dresden 
got decisions out of some 17 different pitches. Black was the top winner. His relief man was 15. I don't think a team ever had such a uh, lack of a pitching staff and got into a World Series. My swing, there the ball drills. Foul. Out of here, but foul. And the two of When you realize Black was so unknown that he did not even appear in his own league spring training uh, book at the start of the year. And now winds up at the end of his rookie year, having won one game in the series, lost a tough one in which he only gave up one run, and is now trying to pitch his team to a world title against the defending world champion. That's ball high outside, ball three, three and two. Four. And the Yankees have their first base running. Johnny Myers. Moves ponderously down to first, as you see. Now we have the Yogi stepping in. Barrow playing despite that uh, bruise, tip of the left index finger. Barrow is 6 4 24. A high pop up. Going out into center. Snyder coming in. Takes it for the up. Now we have Gene Woodling, who just made that fine catch. Well, you don't know how important that catch was he just made. It certainly saved one run. And uh, you don't know what might have happened. It might have saved the series. Who knows? We will see. In fact, this is the day that we're all going to see. Curve on the outside, ball one. Gee, when you think about it, friends, it's almost remorseless, isn't it? Here are a team that's been years and years being built in the process. Kids scouted, sorted, checked, farm system. Over for a call strike. Year after year of uh, grinding competition up through the minors to the majors. Teams welded, starting at spring training camp. And here we are, everything hinging on one ball game. High fly ball into left center. Schubert takes it, and two men are out, and Myers holds it first. Here is Norin. Number 25, Norin, right fielder. Norin, so far, has had three for eight. Started the first game, and started again yesterday, and starting today. A high fly ball into short right. Here's Corello moving under. One and a half innings have gone. And at the middle of the second inning, the score remains. The Yankees, nothing. The Dodgers, nothing. Look sharp. Feel sharp. Sharp and listen, Mr. How are you fixed for plans? Do you have plenty? How are you fixed for plans? You better check. Please make sure you have enough. Cause the worn out blade makes shaving mighty tough. How are you fixed for blades? You better look. To let blue blades we need. This string around my fingers a reminder. That it is. To purchase something I must not forget. We know. Is it shampoo, cigarettes, or talcum powder? No, it's easy shaving blue blades by Gillette. How are you fixed for blades? You better look. Gillette blue blades we need. Eddie Lopat is ready to shove off now for the last half of the second inning. There's no score. But no runs and no hits. Lopat uh, was plagued the early part of the season with a bad arm. But he came around all right. One ten, lost five. His World Series record, three victories and one defeat. His first defeat in game three of this current encounter. Well, here is Roy Campanella. He was four for 24 and he's been a singles hitter. He's supposed to be one of Brooklyn's big power men. There's a trickle ball back to the mound and no power there. One out. He hit a screwball right off the end of his bat. I am and Bill Hodges is now becoming quite a sentimental uh, favorite. 
The big guy has not a hit. Oh, to 17. If he fails to hit today, he will have achieved a uniqueness which will be better. No man has ever played seven World Series games as a regular. Failed to get a hit. We don't like to mention that sort of a, of a record possibility, but yet there it is. Gill has been in the midst of his worst uh, batting slump in his whole life. There was a slatter curve high outside ball up. Low pad, very tricky. Sun is now getting through very well. Hodges swing at a long fly ball. Mantle backing up. And makes the catch. So that's the best ball that Gill has hit in the series. Hit a long way, but straight away. Now we have two up. Number eight, George Schuber, George Schuber is two for seven in the series. He doubled in the eighth inning with two out yesterday. That put the tying run, second base, and that is when Rashi was replaced by Reynolds, who made it stand up. They hit through the middle. First hit of the ball game. Lamaez holds first against Kibben. Batter is to be Ferrello, who is four for 20. The Dodgers were poisoned to starting left handers all through the National League race. However, the Yankees in the fly say that Lopat is not an ordinary left hander. Game seven, second inning, two out, runner at first, and no score. Ground ball, fair, right over third base, to throw two first, in time, throws out, keeps on going to right field. No runs, one hit. So at the end of two innings, the totals, no runs, no hits, and one error for the Yankees. No runs, one hit, and no errors for the Dodgers. Now a whole year's work in the world's title in addition, all wrapped up with just seven innings left. So it is getting tighter and tighter. I know that Walter O'Malley, the president of the Dodgers, he's been walking around practically talking to himself. I know that the O'Malley has been talking to the little men, but whether they've answered him back or not remains to be seen. Dan Topping, of course, is a, a great deal calmer. He's had his Yankees already win for him before. But now it's Billy Martin. Curve ball on the outside. Ball one. Now looking at uh, Vice President uh, Bavese and Thompson, and there is Walter O'Malley. Get the cigar. The Yankees have won 14 world titles, lost uh, four. The Dodgers have lost uh, the five previous World Series they've been in. And this one is to be decided right here and now. In fact, it is in process. And your friends at Gillette are very happy to telecast it for you. No score. High fly ball. Snyder comes in. Under. Remember, the wind is blowing in. It is holding up these fly balls. One out. Now the pitcher for New York. Eddie Lopat. Lopat has one hit and knocked in the run with it. Pretty good hitting pitcher. Curve outside. All right. You're looking down now toward the um, Yankee box. There's a ground ball that is hit up toward first base. We'll get that picture for you again. Hodges making the put out unassisted at first, and we have two gone. For the Yankees, the gentleman at the left in the light hat is Del Webb. The camera moved just back of him a little bit. You will see, uh, move the camera just a little back to the left. Down and to the left. The bareheaded, there is Dan Topping. Just raised his right hand. And uh, George Weiss is uh, sitting uh, to your extreme right. The camera will come down to the right just a second. There's George Weiss. Then you move on. Uh, down two, and there uh, was the commissioner, uh, Ford C. Frick. There's McDougal leading off. Two down. 
Mike's curve is inside. Uh, Commissioner Frick is uh, not feeling well today at all. In fact, he said that he feels so bad he was ill all evening that if this were not the decisive game, he wouldn't be here. Hot. Hodges. Again, nothing across. And as we uh, get to the middle of the third inning, the score is New York. Nothing but enough. Well, a little bird tells me, you see him there on your screen, that it's time to ask how you fix the blades. Yep, easy shaving Gillette blue blades, I mean. And you can't buy them in your bathroom. So remember to get a fresh supply before you run out. Double edged for double economy. Gillette blue blades have the sharpest edges ever honed. Or they fit your Gillette razor exactly and protect you from the discomfort caused by misfit blades. Ask for Gillette Blue Blades in the Gillette Dispenser that deals them out unwrapped and has a safety compartment for used blades. Holding 20 blades, 40 shaving edges, the Gillette Dispenser is 98 cents. The 10 blade size, 49 cents. For the Dodgers, it will be black and then the top of the order costs the grease. He left that on the mound. Black has gone 0 for 4 as a batter. Curve is over. Ball strike. Swings at a screwball on the outside. Strike two. This ball game is moving uh, as briskly along as the breeze that we have blowing in from behind left and center field. Swings and misses. Strike three. So, Lopat moves down the Brooklyn batting list of nine, striking out three of them, allowing just one hit. The Dodgers have had 45 batters struck out. Record of hitters struck out. The Cubs set it in 45 in a seven-game series, and they had 48 men go down on cliffs. The sun is through. The afternoon is a lot nicer than the morning up here. It's cloudy and cold all morning. Here's Billy Cox. Finding ball to third. Google demise, and we have two out. No score. Ball game in this series, just as tight as a brand new pair of shoes on a rainy day. Boy, that's tight. Well, here's uh, Pee Wee Reese. He's the veteran of the Dodgers. He goes back to 1940 with this club. The curve over. Since Brooklyn has become a power in the National League, there have been uh, four, uh, three head men dominant. First, Larry McPhail, then Branch Rickey, and now Walter O'Malley. Reese has played through all three of those administrations. Lopat, getting ready. Reese hits a high fly ball into right center. Norin goes back, rolls it down. At the end of three, no runs, no hits, and one error for New York. A throwing error on the infield. No runs, one hit, signaled by Schuba, and no errors for the Dodgers. And the Gillette Safety Razor Company is mighty happy to bring you these telecasts. And say, folks, that reminds the old redhead, how you fix for blades? Campanella throwing through, Robinson passing it on to Reese. Throw down to Cox. Ball brought into the mound. For the Yankees, they're number two, three, and four spots. Rizzuto, Madeline, Mize. And this one today is opening innocently. The tight pitching, as did the one yesterday. In fact, it's an opening even quieter. But there's going to be a storm. I guarantee you that they'll tap the pea patch before the day's over. Ace hit. There's a tenth one off black and the first one today. And Rizzuto is on his way for second. Cooper retrieves the ball and bounces back. Little Phil, who had run out from under his cap, is a second with a double. Dave Pinelli, on far second base, picks up the cap, puts it over, so Rizzuto opens with a double inside third, and the Yankees have a crest. Down in the left field corner where that double went, a spectator leaned over and tried to interfere with the ball. He did not. But umpire uh, Bodges, I got one of the park police, put him on duty, and the people down there have been warned not to interfere with the ball in play. But now it's Mantle. Nobody out. Rizzuto at second. Pounding ball to first. Hodges 
Steps on the bag. Mantle is out, and Rizzuto moves over to third. The matter goes out and gets the first run of the ball game over to third base. The batter is Johnny Mize. One ball. Harry gets the ball and strike on fire. Campanella is the catcher. Mize walked in the second inning. The only Yankee to get on except Rizzuto, who's now at third. Low across the kneecaps. Ball one. Back shaking no. He's got his work cut out for him. Strike call. As you have noticed, Larry Getz of the National League staff is deliberate in his strike call back at the plate. He takes a good look at it. A base hitter to left field. Good old scores. And my drives him in. Hitting an outside pitch into left field. He hit the ball right where it was pitched. Reached across the plate. I think he reached out of the strike zone to hit it. And it's a line single, and the Yankees lead one to nothing. So, big John Mize. Ex-National Liga. Now driven in six runs in the series. Barra is Barra. Curve over for a call strike. This run for the Yankees is their fourth in 19 and a third innings against Black. Robinson. Three. Hodges double play. That is double play number four for the Dodgers in the series, and it's the tenth double play we've had all the way through. Four to six to three. The Yankees, one run on two hits. And in the middle of the fourth inning, the score is New York one, Brooklyn nothing. I guess you might say about the, uh, the most unkind uh, thing that the New York Giants, the bitterest enemies of the Dodgers ever did to them, was to deal Johnny Mize to the Yankees. Mize hit the base hit that was pivotal in the 1949 series. Hit it off Franco, if you'll recall. Most people think that was the turning point. He's just driven in a run today. He's driven in five earlier runs. Now the batter is Snyder. Pass ball in under the hand. Ball one. Snyder struck out. First inning. Yankees won. Dodgers nothing. See those circles along the foul lines? That's for the fungo hitters before the ball game. There's a base knock and Snyder adds to his record with a single. That gives him 10 hits for the series. That's not the record. He now has 24 total bases. No other... A uh, player in the history of the World Series, no matter how many games it went, ever had more than 22. So Snyder put the tying run at first as the Dodgers answer back. Which is hit number two off Lopat. The batter is Robinson, who was robbed of an extra baser by a fine catch by Woodling in the first inning. Robinson, three for 20. That was a quick curve over. Strike one. Bunt. Might be trouble. Might be trouble. They're not even short. No that doesn't even throw it. It's a butt single. So Robinson bunts to the pitcher and butts it so neatly that he moves Snyder to second, puts himself on at first, and Lopat does not even throw. And the Yankee bullpen is going to work on direct orders from the bench. And out to the mound is stepping number 37. That's the skipper, the old professor, Casey Stingle. So Lopat's in a jam. Ali Reynolds is getting up in the Yankee bullpen. You saw a player standing up out there. There he is now. He's going to do more than stand up. He's going to start working that right off. Ali Reynolds. Well, the ballpark has come alive. The ball game has suddenly yanked another emotional string. The Dodgers have two big right-hand hitters in the line against this left-hander low pass. Campanella and Hodges. The Yankees are ahead one to nothing. The Yankees have drawn first blood and the Dodgers are trying to cut back. 
But up to our third. Might be trouble again. The base is loaded. It's a box single. So the Dodgers load the bases and set the stage for Gil Hodges. Hodges is uh, given a word of guidance and assurance by Manager Dresden. And now, Casey Stengel is on his way out to the mound. I don't know whether Lopat is going to pitch to Hodges or not. Let's wait and see. Stengel, as you can see, is out there. Three men are on. Single last batter and then two punt singles by Robinson and Campanella, respectively. Gil Hodges hit a long fly ball in the second inning, which Mantle caught. Hodges is 0 for 18 in the series. And just a moment, Stengel may be stalling for time. He's bringing in Allie Reynolds. Well, here comes the Chief. What more do you want? He hasn't had too much opportunity to warm up, but here he comes. Reynolds has won a ball game, lost the ball game, and saved the ball game in this series for the Yankees. Reynolds getting ready. Mel and I were asking him before the ball game if he had hurt his back yesterday in the eighth inning. He said, no, he didn't hurt the back. He just seemed to give himself a pull, his spikes pulled. He said he's ready. He pooped hard any idea that he was hurt. That's the head man of the Yankee pitching staff. So we've now got Black and Reynolds in a ball game again. That's the way we began. Looks like that's the way we're going out. The Dodgers, as... Uh, Customary to say around here on the banks of the Gowanus, at the base is FOB, yeah, full of Brooklyn. Nobody out. Bill Hodges looking for his first hit, as well as his first run batted in the series. And he has grown to be quite a sentimental favorite because he's become such an underdog. And the odd thing is that he's the fellow that led the club in home runs and in runs batted in. Okay. Just set loose, friends. Hold on to your hat, and here we go. Hodges, dug in. Three men on, nobody out. Yankees have the infield pulled in halfway. There's the ball drilled into left field. It is caught, but here comes Snyder toward the plate and scores the tying run. The ball gets away from Reynolds for the moment. Robinson goes over to third. So Hodges does not get a base hit, but he does knock in the tying run, and it's a brand new ball game at one and one. The throw gets away from Reynolds, that uh, gets away from Barra at home plate. Reynolds recovered it. Robinson advances over to third base. But for Hodges, that is a run batted in, his first of the series. And it's a brand new ball game, tied at one and one. Matter scoring it, the run is Charles Lopez, and the run is earned. Now we've got to find who the scorer awards the error to for Robinson moving over to third base. He did not go over on the throw in. Matter is George Schubert. Runners at first and third. The error is charged to Reynolds as the score rose that the ball got away from Reynolds, not Barra. The error is charged to Ali Reynolds. Second Yankee error today. Uh, eighth error of the series. All right. Two ball clubs even again with the Dodgers threat continuing here in the last of the fourth. Schubert takes a curve low inside. Ball one. Schubert is one for one today. He is three for eight so far in the series. Curve blow inside, ball two. High foul ball out of play. That's two and one. A real tough series, isn't it? Huh? Well, I've been looking back in his scorecard, and he says that this is the Snyder's run here in the fourth. is the first time he scored a run outside of when he scored himself with a home run. 
By the way, this is the first uh, of seven Brooklyn runs that Snyder hasn't driven in, although he did score it. Slow curve is beautifully in. Call strike two. Boy, the Chief just lobbed that one through there practically. He spun it off. All right, two and two. I think Stengel uh, brought in uh, Reynolds just about where he wanted to. Didn't want to start him, but he wanted to get him in around the middle of the ball game. Well, he's got him in. This is inning four. Strike three. He let up. That was a change of pace, and Sugar has struck out. And now, Robinson cannot be scored from third as the result of an out. Reynolds has now uh, run his strikeout totals to 17. Rashi has a total of 18. Now, that was a big out. And Reynolds really went to work on Shuba. He just tied him in a knot and turned him every way but loose. Carl Perello, 0 for 1, 4 for 21 this year. And begin to see the march now of the shadow of the stand out from home plate toward the mound. The irregularities at the edge of the shadow of men and cameras on the top of the stand. Casting their shadow. Long, long baseboard road for both of these clubs this year. The road hasn't turned yet, but it's going to turn today. Robinson dancing. Reynolds comes set. Curve hit down to third. Off by Google Chess. He recovers. Close to first. In time. And Rollo is out. McDougal almost had that one get away from him. He played it with his chest, and the Dodgers had the bases loaded and only got one man. So it is now Reynolds' ball game to win or lose. One run, three hits. And it is Reynolds and Black to win and lose it. Well, how can you keep adding this thing and making it run any uh, more dramatically? So Joe Black and Allie Reynolds are now to win and lose it as at the end of four innings, it is hung up at one and one, and the games are tied at three three. And the Gillette Safety Razor Company is very happy to bring you these telecasts. And folks, that reminds me. How you fix for blades? Well, if there's no serious objection heard any place around, let's pause ten seconds for station identification. WNBT New York, Channel Four. In fact, the way this is running, friend, is now one and one. You need fewer and fewer words. Black and Reynolds. Dodgers and the Yankees. And here in the top of the fifth inning, it is Woodling, Norin, and Mott. Number six, seven, and eight hitters. Casey Stengel's batting card. Gene Woodling, who made um, two nice catches out in left field. First in the first inning off Robinson. One run tie. One run, two hits, two arrows for the Yankees. One run, four hits, no arrows for Brooklyn. Black's quick curve is on the outside. Ball strike. And the ball is drilled out toward right field. It's gone. It's a home run for Woodling. It's first to the curve. So Gene Woodling belts a home run. That gives the Yankees nine home runs in the series. And we've had 15 home runs hit by both balls there. The record for a uh, total number of uh, home runs hit in the series is nine, which the Yankees hit in four games back in 28. So they've tied their record for total home runs in the series with nine. Two on New York, which is high, and it is. Ball one to Norrit. Robinson coming over to talk to Black. There's Preacher Roll number 28 and Carl Erskine number 17 down in the Brooklyn bullpen. Everybody is going to be used today. Is there any reason to get him in? Ball strike. One and one. So the Yankees now for the second time, one run to the good. The Dodgers had their big opportunity just now. They got the bases loaded. But Reynolds choked them off with just one run. 
That one run is immediately nullified on one swing by Gene Woodley. A high foul ball. No, it's pay up by third. Cox is under it. Makes the catch. Ball the out. One away. Top of the fifth. Billy Martin, the second baseman. He's 0 for 1 today. Lines it out to center field for a base hit. Snyder blocks the ball to be certain it doesn't go through. I'm Martin, after taking his turn, holds on. The throw coming into second. Single into center. This is hit number four for New York. And the applause is going now for Allie Reynolds. Very strides, fine athlete. Won a game, lost a game in the series. And he and Black have shared their decisions against each other, and they're going to share this one against each other today. So the first was almost quick enough, but not quite. Martin just getting back. Uh, Black beat Reynolds in the first game. Reynolds beat Black in the fourth game. And now here they are, up for grabs in the seventh. Pitch is low outside. Ball one. This is Reynolds' game to win and Black's game to win. Reynolds to lose and Black's to lose. And the Yankees are ahead two to one. Reynolds is a batter. is 0 for 6 so far in the series. We told you that the Yankees' nine home runs have tied their own record for most home runs hit in a series. In other words, the Yankees hit nine in a four-game series back in 28. And this sets a new record for a strictly seven-game series. Washington in 25 had hit uh, eight in that seven-game series. Ground ball hit to the right side. Play is to first base. Reynolds is out. Robinson to Hodges. Martin moves on to second. Throw gone. And McDougall who is off the two, steps in. Curve is outside. Ball one. Campanella out there doing a little figuring with his battery mate, Joe Black. Left-hander is Preacher Rowe, 28. Right-hander, 17, is Erskine. They continued firing away in the Brooklyn bullpen. This is for the marble. For us, there is whole year's work all wrapped up into now half a ball game remaining. As one hit right back of second, Robinson over to first. Google is up. One run, Whitling's home run. Two hits. So at the middle of the fifth inning, scores New York two, Brooklyn one. It's a high fly and an easy out for Gene Hermansky, popular young big league outfielder. Gene, your whiskers look as tough as they come. And they're as tough as they look. You need a smooth shaving Gillette blue blade to handle that beard. You bet. Come with me. It won't take long. Just lather for a couple of minutes. Slip in a Gillette blue blade and ease them off. Boy, how good it feels. Men, buy easy-shaving Gillette blue blades in this dispenser with safety compartment for used blades. 20 for 98 cents, 10 for 49. Look sharp, feel sharp, be sharp. Use Gillette blue blades with the sharpest edges ever honed. My friends, here at Abbott's Field, Allie Reynolds with the sun streaming down is ready to move into the last of the fifth inning. And moving over to the microphone, one of the brilliant broadcasters of our day. It is always a real privilege and a pleasure to be associated with him at any time, especially in a World Series for Gillette, is Mel Allen. Well, how does this one look to you, Mel Rose? That pause was meaningful. That's one is tough to answer, Ed. Hello there, everybody. We're ready to go in the last of the fifth inning. Joe Black, the batter. Ball one. It's a question of the abilities of Reynolds and Black to withstand the strain of their constant appearances in the series. 
Strike one, fastball one and one. Black struck out in the third inning. Chuck Dressen's had a problem several times in the series of his team being behind the pitcher leading off or coming to bat in that half of an inning. There's a bunt high and foul out of play down the first baseline. A situation that revolved about Erskine, for example. The other day, in that tremendous game Sunday at the stadium, we decided to go with him, and it worked out. In this instance, of course, while Chuck has men in the bullpen, this is his boy, Joe Black. And this is only the fifth inning. And so he has no idea about sending in any kind of a pinch hitter. It's in there for a call strike. And Black becomes the second strikeout victim of Reynolds. Reynolds' 18th strikeout, four short of Hal Newhouser's record for most strikeouts in a seven-game series, 22 Set in the 1945 World Series. Billy Cox struck out, grounded to third. Yanks two, Dodgers one, last of the fifth. There's a high drive to deep right center. There goes Norman way back toward the wall, and it's going to be off the wall. Cox is going for at least two bases. The throw in to Martin, and Cox holds it second with a double. Billy Cox lining a high drive off the wall in right center for a double. The first hit off Reynolds since he came in last inning. Cox's seventh hit in the series and his second double. Thus the tying run is in scoring position with Pee Wee Reese coming to bat. Safe on a throwing error in the first inning by... Gil McDougal, fly to right in the third. And on deck is Duke Snyder. One out. Strike, slow curve inside, below the shoulders. Tension mounts with every pitch thrown. There's no peak to it. Cox with his lead away from second base. Reese swings and hits it to left field for a base hit. Here comes Cox rounding third. He's on his way to the plate, and he goes in to tie it up, and there's Reese going down the second on the throw, and he is safe. Yankee bullpen comes alive, and it's Vic Rashi starting to warm up as the Chief seems to be missing just a little bit today. As we told you, the question of whether these arms can stay in the gap. The Woodling's throw to the plate was wide, and he gave Reese a chance to take second on the throw. Tie ball game, 2-2, and here's Duke Snyder struck out and singled. And Casey looking down to the bullpen. Ground ball wide, thrown to Reynolds, covering. Reese holds it third. Up comes Jackie. There was a situation where Mize had gone wide at first, and Reynolds had to get over as the ball got by Mize with Martin making the play. Now with Jackie Robinson up. Line to left and was safe in the fourth inning, beating out a bunt. The scorer now has decided to give Woodling an error on his wide throw that enabled Reese to take second. Which is the third error of the ball game for the Yankees. Now with a great base runner on third and a great runner up, Despite the fact that the two outs, you can look for even a two-out squeeze. You can look for anything right here. At seldom that you'll see the two-out squeeze, but you could look for it. Inside, ball one. Reese on third, Jackie Robinson the batter. Two down, two-two, last the fifth.
Ball two, a little outside. There's the bunt, but he goes foul. Strike one, two and one. So they did try the two out squeeze. He had the perfect setup for it. A great bunter, a fast man plate, and a great base runner on third. Jackie Robinson asked Larry Getz to have a look at the ball. Reynolds hasn't heard them holler to him yet. And there is no sense in trying to pick out any more adjectives to try and indicate the greatness of this series. Just sit back and watch it. Reese on third. Two balls, one strike, two down. Last of the fifth, 2-2 two, two the score. There's a line drive. One run, two hits, one error, and one left on. And the score at the end of five innings, Yanks two, Dodgers two. Look sharp, feel sharp. Be sharp and listen, listen, how are you fixed for play? Do you have plenty? How are you fixed for play? You better check. Please make sure you have enough. Cause a worn out blade makes shaving mighty tough. How are you fixed for play? Better look to let the blade we need. Ready now for the top of the sixth inning. Jackie Robinson got good wood on that last ball, as you saw, a screaming liner that Gil McDougal clutched and our camera was on Gill and just at that point Robinson who was headed for first stopped short did a sort of a jackknife with his feet or a bicycle motion threw his hands up in the air he had done a remarkable uh, job of getting a hold of that one but McDougal did just as remarkable job grabbing it now in the Dodger bullpen you see Preacher Rowe the left-hander and Carl Erskine the right-hander heating up you gotta have everybody ready now there's no more baseball after this afternoon till spring training. So neither manager will hesitate using everybody that they can possibly use to help them out. Your five inning totals. The Yankees two runs, four hits, three errors, two left on. The Dodgers two runs, six hits, no errors, and five men left on base. Scoring has gone along just like the series. First one team and then the other. Bill Rizzuto, the batter. It's a strike. Bill grounded to first and double to left. Dick Crashy, who was warming up for the Yankees, is now resting. There's a smash. Reese Bandit, get him! Right back in. How about that play? The great Pee Wee. He and Rizzuto have shown you some tremendous short stopping in this series. Pee Wee taking a base hit away from his shortstop rival with a tremendous backhand catch of the low liner. Mickey Mantle struck out and grounded to first. All right, ball one. Yanks two, Dodgers two, sixth inning. High outside, ball two. Joe Black pressing a little bit out there. Inside, ball three. This is Black's third start in the series and Reynolds' fourth appearance. Two starts and two relief jobs. In there for a strike, three and one. So the wear and tear may tell. Black 28, Reynolds 34. 
The difference in ages may be a factor. It may not. There's a fly ball out to right field. That ball is going, going, it is gone. And the Yankees are back out in front, three to two in the battle of the home runs. And there's Chuck Dressen over to water cooler. Contemplating this situation, looking down toward the bullpen now and see how the boys are coming. This series will go down as one of the greatest of all time. It will go down as the series called the Battle of the Home Run. Hi, ball one to my way behind Campanella to the screen. The Yankees now have had 10 home runs, breaking the record they set just a little while ago for a seven game series. High ball two. And as a matter of fact, it is a brand new record for any length series from four games on because no team has ever hit as many as 10 home runs in a World Series, whether it be four, five, six, or seven games. Line drive to right field in there for a base hit. Taking a hop by Perillo, throws to first base, but Myers is there. How about that? With a comparatively shallow right field, Myers lumbering down the line. And Perillo, with that rifle arm, cut loose to Hodges. It's been done before, throwing a runner out from right. And now Chuck Dressen is walking out to the mound. With Barra about to come up, we may have the preacher, or we may have Erskine. From a standpoint of the hitter, a left-hand batter, you may have a left-hand pitcher. Or Chuck may decide to stick with Joe. We'll see. Only a magnificent play by Reese. Enable Black to get the first hitter. And we're going to have, I believe, the preacher. It's going to be the preacher. Preacher Rolls coming in to relieve Joe Black. And Joe Black, as he leaves the mound, will be given a tremendous hand. He should. He has pitched magnificently in this series. So Preacher Roll comes on. Joe Black will shortly leave. And Chuck leads the way. And a hand for Joe Black. Great right-hander who carried the Dodgers to their pennant and who pitched tremendously in this series. Having made two starts and gone to the sixth inning today and has pitched reasonably well today. But after all, this is the last game. You can't afford to take even one chance. So the preacher comes in. He relieved yesterday. And now Billy Lowe's, who started yesterday, has replaced... Row in the Dodger bullpen. Number 17 is Carl Erskine, who was warming up along with the preacher. Preacher Row, who came in in the ninth inning yesterday and performed so nobly. Came in the ninth inning yesterday with one out and got the side out. The bases were loaded. And he's coming on now to pitch to Barra. The Yankees, having hit two home runs today, have hit 10 in the series. More home runs than have ever been hit by any one club in any World Series from four games on. The two teams together have hit 16 home runs, more home runs than any two teams have ever hit in any World Series of whatever length. Yogi Barra takes the curve outside for a ball. 
Rivera fly to center and grounded to second into a double play. Yankees three. The Dodgers two, top of the sixth. After a scoreless first three innings, the teams have taken turns in scoring one at a time, beginning with the fourth inning. Outside, ball two. Two balls, no strikes. This is Rowe's third appearance. Made one start and beat the Yankees over at the stadium last Friday. Altogether, he's worked a total of nine innings, allowed six hits. Three runs, walked five, struck out five. There's a strike. Two and one. In Rowe's lone appearance in the 1949 World Series, he beat the Yankees at the stadium one to nothing. Mize on first, one out, one in, sixth inning, Yanks three, Dodgers two. Strike two called, slow curve. Yogi says he didn't like it. Larry gets it. It looked good to him. There's one thing you notice about preacher Rowe. He may start out behind you, but he'll come back and get even with you in the balls and strike counts for the most part. And then he'll take it from there. Strike three. Low curve at him riffling and missing. And now you see the reason, among others, that Myers was not running. Preacher Rose coming in in the clutch and striking out Yogi Berra. Here's Gene Woodling, fly to left and homer. Of course, the reason that it was Rowe. Instead of Erskine in this uh, relief situation, the left-hand batters are coming up. Farah, now Woodling. And should either of those gotten on, or if either of them does get on with Woodling now up, you have Noren next. Two down. It's fairly cool today. It's top coat weather. But you can be sure that as far as those men on the diamond are concerned, it's mighty hot. As a wrap back through the middle, out over second in the center, Mize holds it second as the Duke tosses back into Robinson. Woodling second hit. Seven hits for the Yanks. Now let's see. Hank Bowers getting up off the bench, taking off his jacket, and he may be going up to hit for Noren. He is. He's going over the bat rack. As Stengel now counters with a right-hand hitter against the left-hand pitcher. Bauer has had only one hit in the series. That was in the second game. It was here. It was in the first inning. A looping single to right center. He's had only one out of 17. Noren had had three hits in the series. Three out of 10. So Hank Bauer comes in with Mize on second, Whitling on first, two outs, top of the sixth inning. Yankees three, Dodgers two. Low inside, ball one. There are many factors to be taken into consideration as you watch the game. Again, with hoping that you will not misunderstand the remark, no criticism intended, but rather an actual fact. Mize is not a fast runner. And therefore, there is a possibility that even if Bauer should come through with a single, Mize might be thrown out the plate or he might be held at third. It's something to look for, in other words. As a roller, foul down the third baseline. One ball, one strike. Red and I have been telling you throughout the series, almost uh, in the beginning at least of the second game, 
how important each pitch has been. And we're constantly repeating it, but it's true. Ground ball foul down the third baseline. Strike two, one and two. And particularly today, we reach a peak in that department because every time a man cocks his arm and throws a ball, the world's championship rides on it. Preacher Rose, an amazing individual. He is concerned about the situation. He's not afraid of it. He is cagey. He's cunning. Myers on second. Woodling on first. Two down. Power hitting for Noren. One ball, two strikes. Yanks three. Dodgers two. Top of the sixth. And now Rowe takes a little too much time. Power steps out. Rowe backs off the hill. There's a ground ball hit the third. Cox puts the ball and the base is loaded. That's the as he tried to play that short hop, the ball skipped by him. Pee Wee Reese making a magnificent back up on the play. It's an error for Cox. And it is his first of the series. Bauer is a very fast runner. And that is why Cox had to charge that ball. And they're very tricky. You don't get to it just at the right instant. That ball will take that little short hop and skip by you sometimes. But take your head off in the meantime to Pee Wee Reese for backing up the play to keep it from going into the outfield. Prevented a score. So the bases are loaded. And here's Martin. Fly to center. Single to center. Two down. Whether the error will be costly or not remains to be seen. Ball one to the outside. Johnny Mize on third. Gene Whitling off second. Bauer off first. Martin fouls it off. One and one. There's Bauer on first base. Hodges moving in behind him. Bill McKinley, the umpire. Gene Whitling's on second. And, of course, Johnny Mize over to third. Yankees three, Dodgers two. What a tremendous situation this is right now. It's Preacher Rowe and Billy Martin. Two men out. One ball, one strike. Mize off third, Whitling off second. Power off first. Outside, ball two. Two and one. Larry gets very deliberate in his calls. And so we have to hold back with him. Outfield shaded a bit toward left. There's a high fly ball in center field. Duke Snyder getting under it. The wind blows it in a little. He comes in, makes the catch. And the preacher pitches out of it. One run, three hits. One error, three left on. And so at the middle of the sixth inning, the score is Yankees three, Dodgers two. In ancient days, men looked like this. Please tell why, Everett. Well, shaving was a painful job. They didn't have Gillette. If they had lived in modern times, used blue blades super keen, well, then they would have looked like this. Yes, we see what you mean. To look sharp every time you shave, to feel sharp. And be on the ball. Just be sharp. Use Gillette blue blades for the quickest, slickest shaves of all. Hank Bauer who went into bat for Noren and reached base on the error by Cox, is now playing right field. Last half of the sixth inning, and the Dodgers have Campanella, Hodges, and Shuba as their first three batters. Joe Black, who showed uh, the results of 
heavy duty in this series and was removed. You may find that his pitching counterpart in this series, Allie Reynolds, they may be battling the same situation, arm fatigue. The Dodgers uh, in the last inning hit some balls real hard off Reynolds after Allie had come in the fourth inning with the bases loaded, none out, relieving Lopat and got out of the jam with but one run being scored. That charged the Lopat. Only a great catch by McDougal on a vicious liner by Robinson saved Allie in the last of the fifth. So here we are now, last of the sixth, 3 2 New York. High ball one to Campanella. Roy bounced to Lopat and beat out a bunt on him. But now the Chief is working. There's a liner into the right field for a base hit. Taken on a hop by Bauer. Throw comes back into Martin, and now the tying run is on first and Hodges up. And the signal goes out to the Yankee bullpen for Vic Rashi to get up. There's Rashi getting up, and maybe someone else. Let's see. Possibly Bob Kazava or Tom Gorman. It's Bob Kazava, a left-hander. Hodges has hit two balls hard today, one to deep center and a liner to left. It's a ground ball out to Rizzuto. Rizzuto to Martin for one. Back to Mize. Double play. That's the seventh double play for New York. And again, Hodges hit the ball hard. Rizzuto had a tough chance to handle as he flashed to his right. That ball, I don't know whether you can see it on your screen or not, but that ball was well hit. And now Casey Stengel is going out to talk to Barra. Not going out to talk to Reynolds. He's talking to Yogi. He wants to find out how Reynolds is, I presume, or either wants to tell him to go out and tell Allie how to pitch to Shuba or to remind him about uh, how they want to pitch to him, any number of things. Of course, Casey knows Reynolds, and he might have told Yogi, go out there and ask Allie, does he think he's got it or not? The chief has got it where the heart is, and when he's at his rest, he's got it where the arm is. But after all, he and Joe Black both are human beings, and they've really done their duty in this series. So here we are with George Shuba, single to center and struck out, two down, last the sixth, three to New York. Curve is swung on, hit sharply to second, grabbed by Martin. Demise. Sides retired. The inning started out promising, but Hodges' sharp rap was gobbled up by the scooter and converted it, converted into the double play, the key play of the inning. No runs, one hit, no errors, no one left on. And the score at the end of six innings with totals. The Yankees, three runs, seven hits. Three errors, five left on. Brooklyn, two runs, seven hits, one error, and five men left on. The Gillette Safety Razor Company is happy to bring you these telecasts. And folks, that reminds me. How are you fixed for blades? And now let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. WNBT, New York, Channel 4. While the action was going on in the last of the sixth inning, in the, during the course of the final batter, Jim Turner, the Yankee pitching coach, went down to the bullpen to talk to both Rashi and Kazava. Kazava sat down. Rashi is still warming up, and now Turner is signaling again. He's out in front of the Yankee dugout. And let's see. Reynolds is scheduled to lead off in the top of the seventh. There's Casey walking around. I don't know what they're signaling about. Ralph Houck is running in from the bullpen. He can't get the signal. Now Turner is going down there himself, number 31, with the mitt. Charlie Silvera. There's a big build up to a terrific letdown. 
seems it always going on was that Turner wanted to get a minute out there unless uh, unless Houck is going to be used as a pinch hitter. Now, Kevin is going to hit for Reynolds. <laughs> Ralph Howe was called out of the bullpen, and he is going to hit. Or Reynolds, which would tend to indicate that Reynolds must have hurt his back yesterday or has hurt his arm or just doesn't feel right. We can only speculate. Now back to down to the bullpen go Ray Scarborough and Johnny Sane. And here's Ralph Howe batting for Reynolds. Seventh inning. Strike. Houck is the Yankees' number three catcher. Plays very sparingly. And that's why we were amazed when we saw him running in that he was going to be the pinch hitter for Reynolds. There's a hit, smash to third. Cox bounces, picks it up, throws in time. One away. And the batter is Gil McDougall. Grounded to short, grounded to third, grounded to second. Most managers like to save their best pinch hitters for the latter stages of the game, particularly when they are ahead. And so that may have been the reason for his using Hawk here instead of someone perhaps like Jim Bridewiser. Gil McDougal. One down, top the seventh. Yanks three, Dodgers two. Outside, ball one. Slow delivery. Ball two. That was real slow. Dick Crashy nearest the stands and Johnny Sane warming up for New York. Strike one. Got the inside corner. Two balls, one strike. Seventh inning, one out. Took a good cut at that one. Strike two, two and two. There's a liner just over to Robinson's head, dropping into right center for a base hit. Carl Perillo tosses back into Robinson. A soft liner. And McDougal is on with a single to right field, right center. His fourth hit of the series. Up comes Rizzuto. Grounded to first, double to left, and line to short. That prompts renewed activity in the Dodger bullpen. Number 17, Carl Erskine. Number 30, Billy Lowe's. Chuck Dressen to the front of the dugout to see what's going on down there. One on, one out. Yanks three, Dodgers two, seventh inning. And the final third of the ball game, unless we go extra innings. Bill bunts beautifully down third baseline. Cox up for the ball. Nice play. And he gets him. Billy Cox making a beautiful play on an excellent bunt. 
It's a sacrifice for the scooter. So his intention was to try and beat that one out. With one out already. So now with two down, McDougal on second. The batter is Mickey Mantle. Struck out, grounded at first, and hit a home run. Now he'll switch around and bat right-handed against Preacher Rowe. Yesterday, when a similar situation arose in the ninth inning, when the preacher came in with runners on first and second and one out, Mantle swung around on him, and though the catcher didn't step wide of the plate, yet Rowe didn't give him anything good to hit at and walked him, then got the next two men who were left-hand batters. As a liner to left center for a base hit, here comes McDougal, rounding third, coming in to score as Snyder's throw goes in to Reese. The magnificent Mickey, just 20 years old, driving in his second run, his fifth in the series, and his 10th base hit. That ties Mantle with Snyder and Reese for most hits in the series at 10. Strike, Yankees four, the Dodgers two. The Yankees have scored one run in each of the fourth, fifth, sixth, and now the seventh innings. Mize walked, single to left and single to right, two for two. All off black. As a fly ball to right field, going over for Sprillo into the bullpen, foul territory makes the catch. Mize hits a foul fly to Perillo. One run, two hits, no errors, one left on. And so at the middle of the seventh inning, the score is Yankees four, Dodgers two. When you talk to big league baseball and football players about shaving, you'll find that just about every one of them uses the Gillette Super Speed Razor. Saul Rogovin says, The Gillette Super Speed makes shaving much faster and easier. Now listen to Norm Stanley. In my opinion, no amount of money can buy a handier, easier shaving razor. Now a tip from Ken Cavanaugh. For easy and refreshing shaves every time, I'll take Gillette Super Speed over all others. Men with the Gillette Super Speed razor, you change blades instantly. Twist. Zip. Twist. You get this superb shaving instrument plus blue blade dispenser with safety compartment for used blades and styrene travel case for only one dollar. The, uh, the new Yankee pitcher now is Vic Rashi, who worked yesterday's game and was removed in the eighth inning. Down the Dodger bullpen, you've got Erskine and Lowe's working away. Number 17, Erskine, number 30, Lowe's. And in the Yankee bullpen, nearest the stands is Ray Scarborough, and nearest the foul line is Johnny Sane. Now, yesterday, Vic Rashi, in his second start of the series, went seven and two-thirds innings, was removed in the eighth. Vic, all year long, and last couple of years, has been a great competitor, but a pitcher who has required his full quota of rest to be effective. He has never been an effective relief pitcher. If you will check back through the records, you'll find that he seldom, very rarely, has ever been used in relief. I don't believe he's used in relief at all this season. But he's coming on. Lopat worked three innings and Reynolds three. Reynolds went three innings, allowed three hits, walked one, struck out two, and allowed one run. Now Joe Collins has gone in to play first base as Casey Stengel ships to the defense. The batter now is Carl Perillo. The strike. Yanks four, Dodgers two, last of the seventh. Perillo twice has grounded to third. 
There'll be a lot of moves being made in the next little while. Inside for a ball, one and one. With Erskine and Rowe, uh, rather with Erskine and Lowe's heating up, we may have a pinch hitter for Rowe. Just outside, ball two, two and one. Paid attendance today, 33,195. Two balls, one strike on Carl Perillo. Ball three, inside. Jake Fittler way out of that coach's box, hollering words of encouragement down to Perillo. Ball four, Perillo walks. So the pot keeps boiling. Rocky Nelson is going up to bat for Preacher Rowe, number 32 at the bat rack. Chuck Dresson, the Dodger skipper, coaching at third, making his move. Rocky Nelson hitting for Preacher Row. Yanks four, Dodgers two, last of the seven. Perillo on first, no one out. Ball one outside. Rashi's having no trouble with his control. And now Casey Stengel has switched in his bullpen. He has gotten Bob Kazalba to throw in place of Scarborough, left-hander, same the right-hander. Strike one. One ball, one strike. One ball, one strike, one on, no outs. Last of the seven. 4-2 New York. Tying run to the plate for Brooklyn. Ball two outside. There's Cookie Lavigetto out in front of the Dodger dugout, slapping his hands together. Doc Wendell to the trainer just at the left. Two balls, one strike. Rashi has just come on. Has had difficulty with his control to walk Perillo. 2-1 count on Nelson. Batting for row, and then you have the top of the Dodger order. There's a fly ball foul down the right field line and out of play. Count is 2-2. Two and two. There's Casey Stengel slapping his hands together as he comes off the Yankee bench. And I'm telling you, they're just coming off the benches with every pitch. Billy Martin goes in to talk to Rashi. I remember Red Barber and I, who had the privilege of working the 1947 World Series together, I remember one thing that we said when it was all over. Where are we going for a long rest? Remember that, Red? It's the way we feel now. And I know you do, too. This has been a series. Never be forgotten. Two balls, two strikes. For a off first. Nelson lifts a high pop to short. The pseudo under it. He almost lost in the sun. Had a little difficulty. Billy Cox, the batter. Struck out, grounded to third, and doubled to right center. The grim determination on Billy's face. The seriousness of the situation. 
exemplified and revealed beautifully by our fine cameras. Ball one, just a little outside. Now you've gotten to the stage of the game where both sides are going to be a little touchy about the call in those close pitches. Navigato just hollered out to Yogi when Yogi turned and said something to Larry Getz. One ball, no strikes. Ball two, outside. There's Cookie. He's the cheerleader right now. Look at the other Dodgers in the dugout. Tense. And over in the Yankee dugout, tension as they lean forward, occasionally moving around, shifting positions, slapping hands together. No more baseball after today. This is it. Every pitch is it. Ball three, low. There's Cookie. He's just tasting the situation. And there are the, the Yankees in the dugout. There's Jim Turner with his knees crossed. Boys moving around and about, and the fans in the stands are doing the same. Three balls, no strikes, one out, one on. Fort to New York. Strike one, three and one. And the bullpens, both are busy. Erskine and Lowe's, Kazava and Sane. Strike two, full count. Yogi and Cox at the plate. Billy looking down at Chuck. There's Dressen hollering up there. Rillo on first base, one out. We'll see whether or not he'll be running with the pitch, most likely. We'll see. There he goes. Pitch is swung on. Hit out to right field for a base hit. Farrell on his way to third. Holds up as the throw is. It hits Farrell on the leg. And then Barra goes over to grab it. And so Billy Cox lines a single to right on the 3-2 pitch. And now the lead run comes to the plate for the Dodgers. Boy, I'm telling you, the excitement rides and rides ever higher. These batters just won't leave these pitchers alone, I'll tell you that. And here is one of the most dangerous clutch hitters in the game. Spark plug of the Dodgers. The captain, the little colonel, Pee Wee Reese. And there's Casey Stengel. He's worried. And now Jim Turner. They signal down to the bullpen. And on deck is Duke Snyder. So that's the picture. Morello on second, Cox on first, one out, Yanks four, Dodgers two, last of the seventh. Reese bounces it off, strike one. I guess you heard that one hit up against the wire screen. We're wondering here right now that what Case will do. Barring the long ball, whether Rashi will even pitch to Snyder. But let's wait till that time comes. Low outside for a ball. One ball, one strike. There's Casey hollering to Yogi. Rillo off second. Cox off first. One out. Yanks four. Dodgers two. Last the seventh. Ewe at the plate. Brashy ready. Outside. Ball two. The curve. Two and one. Brashy obviously is not sharp. His control is not there.
Two balls, one strike. One away. Low, ball three. We get Cookie Lamigetto. He really leading the cheers in the Dodger dugout. And now Casey Stengel coming out of the Yankee dugout is Chuck Dressen. Stands at third, wondering. Casey knows that if the Pee Wee should walk, you got the Duke coming up for the bases loaded or a pitch that might be too good to Reese. Could be given quite a ride. Case gives Rashi a pat on the back, going to leave him in. This is a time when, regardless of who you are, you need more than just a pat on the back. Down to the bullpen, Kazaba and Sane, both getting ready. Erskine and Lowe stopping to watch the action. Strike two, got the inside corner. So you've got a full count. Man alive, this crowd is ready to roar. They're coming up out of their seats almost in every pitch. Yanks four, Dodgers two, seventh inning, one out. Barillo on second. Cox on first, race the batter. The count three and two. We'll watch the runners. Playing it safe. Ball four, they're loaded up. And now to the dugout. Out of the dugout, into the mound goes Casey Stengel. And the Duke is the batter. So, Case may bring in Bob Kazava, a left-hand pitcher. We're not certain. We'll watch him. He's going to have somebody come in. Kazava, Casey Holler to plate umpire Larry Getz. It's Kazava, a left-hand pitcher. Here he comes. While Stengel and Rashi await the arrival of Kazava, off to the right of home plate, the Duke with Jackie Robinson and the Dodger Bat Boy, and Jackie is talking to the Duke. And boy, here's your chance. Bob Kazava, who won eight and lost eight for the Yankees. From Wyandotte, Michigan. A six foot two, 200 pounder. Blue eyes, blonde hair. Who appeared in the World Series last year in relief. Pitched one inning in relief last year. He's had a lot of tough assignments in his career, but none tougher than this one. Now down in the Yankee bullpen, replacing Kazava, is the man a lot of folks thought might start today's game, Tom Gorman. He's uh, warming up next to the railing. Meantime, it's Johnny Sane still throwing. So the stage is set for another great peak. It's been one peak on top of another in what could be the greatest of all World Series. On first base is Pee Wee Reese. On second base is Billy Cox. On third base is Carl Perillo. One out. The Yankees four, the Dodgers two, and the Duke get back. 
So here we are. Strike one, fastball. Kazaba has a fair curve and a good fastball. Outside, ball one, one and one. Jim Turner hollers out to Martin about something. Three men aboard, one out, Dodgers battling back. Foul ball over the Yankee dugout, strike two, one and two. Sarah calls time now to go out and talk to Kuzava. And there's Casey, heart pumping a mile a minute. And who can blame him? The Yankee skipper, hoping to achieve four consecutive World's Championships. The Dodgers in here battling valiantly to achieve their first. And this is the day it's going to be decided. And this could be the moment. Jake Pittler cutting up a storm at first. Freeman leading away. The Duke takes a curve inside, two and two. And the crowd ooing and eyeing. Two balls, two strikes. Ball three. Boy, the crowd is roaring now. Perillo on third, Cox on second, Reese on first, and a full count on Duke Snyder. One out. Here's the payoff pitch. It's a high pop-up. The infield fly rule is called. The batter is automatically out. McDougal has it. So a tense moment there. And the tension still holds. Because the bases are still loaded and the batter is Jackie Robinson. Under the infield fly rule, if a batter, it's a pop-up, which in the judgment of the umpire can be handled by an infielder with runners on first and second, or first, second, and third, and less than two out, the batter's automatically out. The runners go at their own risk. So Bob Kazava is going to stay in there and pitch to the right-hand batter, Jackie Robinson. Sometimes you can look for a switch. Now, here comes Casey out of the dugout. Let's see. He may still switch. I don't know. Casey goes back in. Decides to let Kazava stay with it. Three runners leading away. Strike one foul tipped into off the hand of Yogi. No balls, one strike. Robinson lined to left, beat out of bunt and lined to third. And the Dodgers in the dugout, tense with anxiety. And in the Yankee dugout, they're tense with anxiety. I tell you the truth, it's just gotten to the point now where it's just past tense. Even though we're playing in the present. Brillo on third, Cox on second, Reese on first. Inside for a ball, the counts one and one. Man with every pitch that's thrown. The championship flag is flying. His offer decides to back off a little. Jim Turner comes to the front of the Yankee dugout, hollering something to Kazava. One errant pitch can make the difference. Just outside, ball two. Yogi didn't like the call. Now, Get says something back to Yogi. Veins are starting to pop in the necks of everybody around now. It's rough and tough. Foul ball, hit long and deep. Onto the roof and out of the ballpark. Two and two. A 
his case, taking a look at that one. On third base is Perillo. On second base, Cox. On first base, Reese. Yanks four, Dodgers two, seventh inning, two down, two two on Robinson. Ground ball foul. The Gillette Safety Razor Company, delighted to be able to bring you all these peak moments of World Series drama. I just don't believe there's been anything ever any greater in baseball. Three runners ready to lead away. It's a high pop-up. Who's going to get it? Here comes Billy Martin digging hard, and he makes the catch at the last second. How about that? There was the ball that the wind held up. And even though it was just a high pop-up, Billy Martin still had to lunge for the ball. Man, it's been a great series. It still is. We got two more innings at least to go. And a great job of clutch pitching by Bob Kazava. No runs. One hit, no errors, and three big men left on. The score at the end of seven innings, Yankees four, Dodgers two. When you face the world to feel sharp On the ball indeed, just be sharp Skim your whiskers up with the modern Gillette Super Speed And now Carl Erskine returns to the wars for the Dodgers The great courageous right-hander Who was knocked out in his first start in this series as the Yankees beat him 7-1. to one. But who came back last Sunday in what will go down and has already gone down as one of the greatest ball games in the history of the major leagues and pitched such sensational ball after Johnny Mize had clipped him for the three-run homer that gave the Yankees a 5-4 lead, retiring the final 19 men to rack up a 6-5, 11-inning victory that was a dynamic ball game all the way and one that is tops for thrill. So here's Carl Erskine who finished that game with a blister, with a torn blister at that. Clyde King, number 23, and Ben Wade, number 46 in the Dodger bullpen. As Red told you earlier, as I had occasion to mention in the beginning of the show today, they're going to use everybody if they have to. So here we go now into the eighth inning. Yanks four, Dodgers two, and the batter is Barra. The pitcher is Erskine. The high pop up. And a short right. Robinson out. Perillo in. Perillo says he'll take it. Yogi had climbed to center, grounded to second, and a double play struck out and fly to right. Up comes Gene Woodling. Erskine, before this relief appearance, had worked 16 innings in the series, giving up 11 hits and 9 runs, walking 9, striking out 10, winning 1, losing 1. Woodling flied to left, homeward, single to center. High, ball 1. The let up pitch is in there for a call strike, one and one. Give him that big motion. Took a little off the fastball. Low outside, ball two, two and one. drive to Hodges. Two away. Up comes Hank Bauer. Safe on an error in the sixth inning when he batted for Noren with Preacher Rowe having come on at that point to relieve 
Joe Black. Yanks four, Dodgers two, eighth inning. Little outside, ball one, perhaps a little low. For you late viewers, the Yanks scored first in the fourth inning. Rizzuto double scored on Mize's single. Outside, ball two. The Dodgers retaliated in the last of the fourth. Snyder singled. Robinson and Campanella beat out Bunts. The low pattern starters taken out. Reynolds came in. Hodges lined the left to get Snyder in, but Shubin Perillo struck out and grounded to third respectively. Inside, ball three. The Yankees went ahead in the fifth inning on Woodling's homer over the right field wall. Two to one. The Dodgers came right back to tie it. Two two. On a double by Cox and a single by Reese. Foul back. Hank had the green light on a three nothing pitch. The Yanks went ahead three to two in the sixth inning on Mantle's homer over the right field wall. Then they made it four to two in the seventh. McDougal single, Rizzuto sacrifice, and Mantle single to left. That was off the preacher. So it's four to two, eighth inning, two outs, and three one to count on Bauer. He held up, and the pitch is a little higher, a little outside. Ball four. Up comes Billy Martin. Getting a, a round of applause for his fine catch on what normally would have been a routine play on Robinson's prop up to end the dramatic seventh inning. But the wind held it up, and Billy had to really go hard. He's got something smeared under his uh, right eye. I don't know whether that's intentional or not. Johnny Myers will often put his uh, finger in some water and into the black dirt, rub under his eyes to protect against sun, the glare of the sun. That may be what Billy has done, too. As a liner in the center of the Duke coming, he has it. No runs, no hits, no errors, one left on. And so at the middle of the eighth inning, the score is Yankees four, Dodgers two. One more base hit, the Texas is going to get a great pitching prospect. When his team's at bat, you find Bertie Tebbett's fiery American League catcher giving the bird to the other club. But after the game, see the change. Bertie, most anybody would know you shaved with a Gillette blue blade. I always use them. Never have any trouble getting quick, clean shaves. Easy 20 show. for 98 show cents. Yourself. 10 for now 49. Like Look sharp. Feel sharp. Be sharp. Use Gillette blue blades with the sharpest edges ever honed. Last half the eighth inning. Barring extra innings, there are nine outs left in the World Series. Yes. Or possibly six outs. Strike three, strike out. That ties a record for a seven game series. Most strikeouts by a club, 48. That's the 48th. Dodger to go down swinging, or at least 48 strikeouts against the Dodgers collectively. The Chicago Cubs in the 45 World Series in seven games at uh, that number of strikeouts. Strike call to Gil Hodges. Gil's hit three balls hard today. Mantle went back to the center field fence to take his fly. He lined the left with the bases loaded in the fourth to get one run in and grounded to shorten the double play. Now, Larry Getz is warning somebody in the Dodger dugout. Can't see who it is. It was over in the extreme right corner of the dugout. The extreme right corner. Way over into the corner. Can't see who it is. Now he's throwing him out. I don't know who it is. 
And that we'd like to get the identity of that. I believe the only person ever to have been thrown out of a World Series was Joe Medwick. And somebody has been thrown off the Dodger bench, and Larry Getz said, get out of there. He's angry. I don't know who it is. Is it Cookie? Let's see. Ralph Franca. It is Ralph Franca. And if memory serves me correctly, he is the second player in World Series history ever to be thrown out. Certainly the first non-combatant, so to speak. Inside for a ball. That is to say, not in the game itself. You can't blame them, boys and girls. Ladies and gentlemen, this is rough and tough. Curve inside. Ball two, two and one. George Shuba on deck. It's Gil Hodges right now. And there's Shuba. Gangs four, Dodgers two, eighth inning. A ground ball hit the third. McDougal has it. Throws across to Collins and... Uh, Pulls him off the bag. That's two throwing arrows for McDougal. In today's game, it is the fourth arrow for the Yankees. And we're going to have a pinch hitter, Andy Papko, batting for Shuba. Tommy Holmes has run down to the Dodger bullpen to loosen up. He'll go in to play left field. Gil McDougal with four errors in the series, ties the record for most errors in a seven-game World Series. Four. Pepper Martin had that dubious distinction in the 1934 series with the Cardinals. So we'll see whether that'll be a costly one or not. Puts the tying runs the plate for Brooklyn. And, of course, more than uh, that immediate prospect is the fact that, or equal with it, it puts extra pressure on the pitcher. Foul ball, strike one. A lot easier working with two outs and none on than one out and one on. John McGraw once said, if it weren't for errors, baseball wouldn't be as exciting a game as it is. Curve inside, one and one. One ball, one strike, one out, one on. The Yanks, four Dodgers, two eighth inning. Inside, ball two, two and one. and one and brings Casey off the bench again Carl Carrillo is the next batter Thank you to both count Carrillo on deck
Strike three, strike it out. And thereby a new record has been established by the Dodgers of 49 strikeouts for a seven game series, erasing the old mark of the Cubs, which the Dodgers just tied a moment ago in this inning. Carl Perillo steps in, grounded to third twice and walked. Strike one. There's a long drive to left field. Whitman going back, and he's got it. That ball started out, had the Pope standing up. No runs, no hits, one error, and one left on. And the score at the end of eight innings of play, Yankees four, Dodgers two. Look sharp, feel sharp, be sharp and listen, mister, how are you fixed for play? Do you have plenty? How are you fixed for play? You better check. Please make sure you have enough. Cause a worn out blade makes shaving mighty tough. How are you fixed for blades? Better look to less good blades we need. The Yankees' four errors so far today. Tommy Holmes, by the way, is going into play left field for the Dodgers, as we indicated to you a moment ago. The Yankees' four errors in this game are too short of the record. Most errors for one club in a single series game. The White Sox in 1906 and again in 1917 and the Pittsburgh Pirates in 1909. Bob Cazava getting a hand as he comes up to lead off in the ninth inning. Strike one. Carl Erskine pitching for the Dodgers. Their third curler. Ball one, one and one. ball back to first out of play up onto the roof cameraman busy up there working away Casey Stengel leaning up against the post man everybody like to have something to lean up against right now just outside ball two 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 balls, two strikes. Foul ball again, out of play. In the event you wish to think ahead a little bit, Erskine is the scheduled leadoff man the last of the night. We'll have to consider for him, then the top of the order, Cox and Reese. Low bounder hit out to Jackie Robinson. One away. Here's Gil McDougal. Grounded to short, third, second, and single to right. One for four. Clyde King, 23, Ben Wade, 46, and the Dodger bullpen. Heating up against two possibilities. Erskine let down the top of the ninth, or the Dodgers tying it. 
in the last of the night. Strike one to McDougal. Ball one, one and one. Let up deliveries low outside, ball two. Two balls, one strike. Scoreboard still has one and one. Now it slides to two up. Foul off upstairs, strike two, two, two. back through the middle in the center for the base hit. Snyder tosses back into Robinson and McDougal holds on at first with a single to center. It's his fifth series hit. Up comes Rizzuto. Grounded to first, double to left, lined to short and sacrificed. It was in a similar situation in the seventh inning with one out that McDougal singled. Rizzuto dropped a butt down where the dual purpose, trying to move the runner to second and trying to beat it out himself. He was thrown out on a nice play by Cox, and then Mickey Mantle delivered a two-out single that scored McDougal. Dodgers realized that Rizzuto can hit and run as well as bunt, so they're trying to hold McDougal as close as possible. Ball one. They do not figure McDougal to try to steal, particularly, so you have to watch for every possibility. There's the superimposition so that you can see the base runner as well as the batter. strike one and one at the inside part of the plate below the shoulders see Phil looking down toward third now as Crosetti hollered at him one ball one strike one out top of the ninth the Yanks four Dodgers two out they thought they might be going but they might be putting on the hit and run they didn't two and one the count now there's Rizzuto again looking at Crusetti <clears throat> Bill steps out has another look now dress and whistles to Campanella so we'll see don't be surprised if it's hit and run or another pitch out First thing, he just got back. There's that whistle from Chuck again to Campanella. Roy looked around. See that whistle? That's dressing the dugout, getting Campanella's attention. And the battle of wits goes on. A lot goes on in a ball game that you seldom have a chance to see it here. Another throw over. Two balls, one strike. Again. That one almost thrown away. Pop up foul back to third. Billy Cox drifting over toward the stands and in. Two 
two outs, and here's Mickey Mantle. Struck out, grounded the first, homer and single. Driven in two runs. Regardless of the outcome of the series, this young man's name will be emblazoned high among the stars. Mickey Mantle, Duke Snyder, Johnny Mize, Pee Wee Reese, Phil Rizzuto, Billy Cox, Barillo, Tapco, and Barra. You can go on and on. Ball one. As a matter of fact, it really isn't fair to single out anyone. Of course, we didn't name any of the pitchers. They're all in for their share of glory. But every man has fought his heart out in this series. Ground ball grabbed beautifully by Gil Hodges to convert it into the put out. No runs, one hit, no errors, one left on. And the score at the end of eight and a half innings, Yankees four, Dodgers two. The Gillette Safety Razor Company is happy to bring you these telecasts. And folks, that reminds me. How are you fixed for blades? Well, here we are. Bobby Morgan is going to come up to bat for Carl Erskine, right-hand hitter. This will be the half inning that will either determine the world's champion or whether we continue on into extra innings. We can determine it one way or the other. So Bobby Morgan comes in to bat for Erskine. Billy Cox and Pee Wee Reese to follow. Gorman and Sane in the Yankee bullpen. The Dodger bullpen alive. King and Wade. Yanks four, Dodgers two, last of the night. High foul out of play, back to third, strike one. Young Bobby Morgan from Oklahoma City. Batting for Carl Erskine. You can be sure nobody's left this ballpark either. There's a fly ball, hit the left. Whitling back there, has it, one away. More of a high drive than a fly ball. Here's Billy Cox. Struck out, grounded to third, double to right center, single to right. He's had two for four. Dodgers still in there battling. Strike one. Now the Yankees have three men warming up. Gorman, Sane, and Ray Scarborough. Curve, a little low. One ball, one strike. Breaths are short. Hearts are beating rapidly. Pulses are racing on every pitch. Strike two as he fouls it back to the screen. One and two.
Curve is hit sharply to second. Martin has it. Goes to Collins, two away. And now coming to bat is the little colonel. Pee Wee Reese. And on deck is a guy named Duke Snyder. And so, the situation is right now with Kazava and Reese. Casey Stengel hollers, hey, look out for the bunt. Time call. McDougal calls time. He wants to say something to Kazava. Casey hollers, look out for the bunt. Because what the Dodgers need is a man on with the Duke coming up to have that tying run at the plate. Inside, ball one. Chuck Dressen slapping his hands together. The way this series has been going, anything can happen, and it has. High ball two. Two balls, no strikes. There's Chuck Dressen giving his signal to the Pee Wee. Billy Martin trying to come in and settle Kazama down. Strike one, two and one. Saw Reese trying to rattle Kazava. He's trying to get on any way he can. Wants to bring the Duke up to set it up for the tying run at least. Time call, Reese steps out. Any maneuver to rattle that pitcher, get him off his stride. Part of the game. Two balls, one strike, two down. Last half of the ninth inning. Yanks four, Dodgers two. Strike two, two, two. And Hunter Yogi from the Yankee bench. Yogi looked around. Fouled off, and we're still alive. Up against the screen. That's where the boys are doing the radio version of the series of sitting. Jack Brickhouse and Al Helper. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, last of the ninth inning. Yanks four, Dodgers two. And the crowd is standing. They're standing. Just took a look. Most of them are standing. Foul ball, hit the handle of the bat. Anticipatory or not, Policemen have just uh, moved into the Yankee dugout and over to the Dodger dugout. As a fly ball hit out the left field, Whitling getting under it. And the Yankees are champions. And look at Farrell. Piggyback riding Bob Cazala. The Yankees for the fourth consecutive time. And boy, they're pounding that Cazala for a tremendous relief job. Look at him go. Well, the Yanks are happy. They had to do it the hard way again. They've always won the big one, and again they did it. And the final score, the New York Yankees, four runs, ten hits, four errors. The Brooklyn Dodgers, two runs, eight hits, one error. In a moment, we'll review the highlights of the game for you. No one permanent is right for every type of hair. Different types of hair need different types of permanents. And here's the answer from Tony. The new Tony Trio, your choice of three permanents, regular Tony, super Tony, very gentle Tony. Now do what the finest beauty shops do. Choose a permanent custom made for your type hair. Regular Tony is for normal hair. It's now custom made to give a better wave for the millions who have always had good results with Tony. Super Tony is for hard to wave hair. If other permanents didn't take or didn't last, Super Tony is made to order for you. 
Very gentle Tony is for easy to wave hair. Wonderful too for bleached or tinted hair or hair with some natural curl. Today, choose from the new Tony Trio and have a lovelier wave than ever before because the right permanent for you means a better permanent for you. New Tony Trio, cut to save for you and me. New Tony Trio, now you have a choice of three. Later Tony, Super Tony, very gentle Tony. New Tony Trio, cut to save for you and me. Well, Red, the camera is back on us, and that was a tremendous series. Congratulations, Mel, on a great job, and congratulations to the New York Yankees for the second straight time, or not, for the second time, a World Series champion for four consecutive years, and for single, he is still the 1,000% manager. Four years managing the Yankees, four pennants, four World's titles. It was a great World Series, and congratulations go to both ball clubs, and especially to the again champions of the world, the New York Yankees. Well, Red, as you and I both said before the game started today, this has been one of the most terrific World Series of all time, one of the most dramatic. And it was just a shame that one of these two teams had to lose. And we said before the game, I think that every fan, every baseball observer, all the reporters felt the same way, that it was no disgrace to lose and that the winner had nothing to really uh, be arrogant about, if I might use that little harsh word. Uh, it was just... Somebody had to win today, and both teams just covered themselves with glory from start to finish. Well, now, before we uh, get too far gone, the totals are 4-10-4 for the Yankees, 2-8-1 uh, uh, for the Dodgers. The winning pitcher is Reynolds, giving him his sixth win. Uh, he now equals Gomez uh, with six wins. Ruffing, of course, has won seven, the tops in that field. However, the pitching hero for New York, make no mistake about it, was Kazaba, who came on and stopped the Dodgers in the breach when they had their big inning uh, in the seventh, a big chance. This program is authorized under television rights granted by the Commissioner of Baseball solely for the entertainment of our audience and any publication, reproduction, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express consent of the Commissioner is prohibited. Any commercial or other use of the program, such as by charging admission for its showing, is similarly prohibited without the express authority of the Commissioner. Our appreciation for a fine job to our director, Ralph Giffen, for the games here at Ebbets Field, and technical director, Frank Ennis, and to the camera crew. So, fans, that's that. The story of another World Series goes into the record. But Gillette's Cavalcade of Sports carries on. Every Friday night, we telecast the major boxing event of the week. So, plan to be at your television to and enjoy the fun. And now, this is Red Barber with Mel Allen saying, smooth sailing, smooth shaving, and good afternoon from your host, the Gillette Safety Razor Company. Time you take to feel sharp and beyond the ball, just 